traditional flagpole is always topped by something, either a ball or an eagle, a falcon, or a, a hawk. And Sidi Abdul Qadir al Jilani al Baghdad, he is uh, epitomized as being the hawk, or the hawk that sits on the top of the flagpole. So he's known as uh, he's known as Al Baz al and he's known as the hawk, the Baz. And we wanted to read just a portion of the 42nd discourse from his book, Fatr Rabbani, The Sublime uh, Revelation. Fatr Rabbani is, in fact, we know that Wahi does not continue. After Nabi al Karim, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there is no more Wahi. But Allah Ta'ala did not leave us without guidance because He still gives ilham. He gives clear and correct understanding of deen to whoever He decides to give it to. And amongst the ulama and awliya who, who, who Allah Ta'ala chose for that is Sidi Abdul Qadir al Jilani al Baghdad al Himal So we wanted to read just a discourse, a portion of the discourse from Khatur al Baghdad. He says that it was in the schoolhouse in the, the Zawi or the Khanka of the Sheikh in the early morning on the 19th of the Muslim Raja when the Muslim Raja arrived that the Sheikh he said the Prophet Sallallahu is reported as having said he who would like to be the noblest of all people let him devote himself piously to Allah he would like to be the most noblest of all the people let him devote himself piously to Allah Ta'ala. He who would like to be the strongest of the people, let him put his trust in Allah Ta'ala. Two principles he's talking about. He's talking about uh, Akram, and he's talking about Tawakka. And he who would like to be the richest of all the people, let him be reliant on what is in the hand of Allah Ta'ala, rather than relying on what is in his own hands. And again, this is Tawakka. And he said, if a person wishes to enjoy prestige in this world, if you want to be uh, looked up and looked upon with favor by the people of this world, and in the hereafter, he must devote himself piously to Allah Ta'ala, because Allah Ta'ala has said, Indeed, the one who is most honored 
with Allah Ta'ala is the one who has what? Taqwa. Inni akramku inna Allah yaqtaqum. This is what the Shaykh is saying. He's given commentary on his eyes of Karima. Where Allah Ta'ala mentions this in Surah Al-Hujurat. Inni akramku inna Allah yaqtaqum. Indeed, in reality, the most honored of any human being, the most honored of the Muslims is not the one who has the most knowledge of Quran Muji. Not only has the most knowledge of, of, of Hadith Sharif, but the one who is most conscious of his duties to Allah Ta'ala. The Taqwa. This is the state where the individual is conscious of Allah Ta'ala, or he tries to remain conscious of Allah Ta'ala at all times. And it's only possible to, to remain conscious of Allah Ta'ala at all times by remaining in remembrance of Allah Ta'ala. So what do we mean by that? Remaining in zikr all the time. Doesn't mean you have to have a tasbih on your hand all the time. When something happens, you say, SubhanAllah, MashaAllah, Astaghfirullah, this is zikr. This is remembrance of Allah Ta'ala. So we tend to think, especially when it comes to the soul, that zikr is just when we gather in a circle and we do, <clears throat> this is zikr too. But zikr is something that, that you do all the time as a conscious, conscious is Muslim. So the one who has this understanding, who tries to imbibe the deen in his life, he tries to to speak and tries to carry himself in the dini manner according to the Hasana, the, the akhlaq of our beloved Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is the person who is honored by Allah Ta'ala. Allah Ta'ala honors the person. The person may be a faqir in terms of not having a lot of physical wealth. But if he's trying to imbibe the spirit of the deen in his life by trying to be conscious of his duties to Allah Ta'ala, Allah Ta'ala honors that person. You know, that, you know people like this. All of us know something. We know pious people who have no money. We know pious people who have lots of money. We know pious people who, who may not be able to read Quran Majid, but Allah has raised their rank. He may not be able to read Quran Majid in Arabic, but you know this pious old man in his village. You see him going back and forth to the, he's one of the namazis. You see him all, all the time making salah. Allah Ta'ala honors these people. The honor is not just for the ulama. The honor is not just for the people who have a certain level of Islamic knowledge, but it's for those who have sincerity and try their best with what they do know to put it into practice. He says, nobility resides in pious devotion to Allah Ta'ala. The nobility resides in, in, in pious devotion to Allah Ta'ala, while degradation, humiliation, lies in disobedience to Allah Ta'ala. And we find this to be true because there are certain immutable laws that are in place. One of the immutable laws is that if you do wrong, Allah Ta'ala punishes you. Whether you do wrong to a Muslim or not, Muslim. A president, Allah Ta'ala, he answers the call of the oppressed people. Be they Muslim or non-Muslim. If I, so this is why we cannot justify wronging someone just because they may not be Muslim. And you see this deviation right now in the Middle East. In Iraq, in Syria, parts of Turkey where those who have deviated from the way of Nabi al Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are killing Muslims and non-Muslims unjustly. This is deviation. And because of this disobedience to Allah Ta'ala, Allah Ta'ala will eventually humiliate them. They will not win. Because Allah Ta'ala, Allah Ta'ala will humiliate them. So the Shaykh said, if someone wishes for strength in his deen, in the deen of Allah Ta'ala, if, if he wishes for strength, he should put his trust in Allah Ta'ala. Because total trust, tawakkul, will make the heart sound. Now, does this mean you don't do work? No, it doesn't mean you don't do work. And one of my friends, he gave an example, he said, that, and this is, I think, a good example. He said, there was a young man who just started walking on the path, trying to, the path of purification and trying to become a devotee of Allah Ta'ala. He was a novice. And uh, he went to the Sheikh and said, Sheikh, you know, I just want to rely upon Allah Ta'ala. I don't want to work, I don't want to do anything. I just want to go off and let Allah Ta'ala take care of it. I just want to rely completely on Allah Ta'ala. The Sheikh said, it would be better if you did some job. You know, come to the masjid, do your wazifa, do your ramulat in the morning, read Quran Maji, do your dhikr, and go to work. He said, but Shaykh, that's not the work, I'm still working and I just want to rely upon Allah Ta'ala. He said, well, as you like, then you can go. So this young man left, and he walked down stream. There was a, 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 a river, he walked down the river, and he sat there. And he began to do dhikr, he's doing dhikr all day long, making dua to Allah Ta'ala, he's thinking. So I come to Allah, my reliance is upon Allah Ta'ala, this is his thing. So he sits there all day long and then close to the end of the day, maybe around Salatul Asr time, a banana boat floated down, a boat made from banana leaves. And on this banana boat was suji. Suji is it's like um, semolina or cream of wheat. 
and it's made in such a way where you, you saute it with maybe some ghee or butter, then you add honey to it, sugar, then it coagulates and it's a nice treat. And you can put pistachio in it or almonds in it and you can sprinkle, you know, you can make it really fancy if you like. But this was just a plain food. And it came downstream and he picked it up and said, SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah, he grabbed and he ate it. And MashaAllah, this is Tawakkal, Allah is taking care of me. So this happened maybe on three occasions. Each day around the same time, this boat came down, floating down. He picked it up, SubhanAllah, he ate it. So now he's, be, he's becoming curious, where is this boat coming from? So he began, so he started following the, he went up, upstream early that night and he saw where the banana boat came from. It came from a house. And in that country, uh, you had um, uh, canals that led from the houses and then the water would flow from the houses, the waste water would flow out and then into the river. So he saw this banana boat with the sweetie come out of a particular house. He came, he knocked the door, so like, and then the servant came, you know, Muslims have servants, if you're rich you can. Employee, so. so the servant came to the door and said, well, what would you like? He said, well, you know, I've been getting, I've been a recipient of your, your master's generosity. I wanted to know why you were putting the suji, putting the good suji in the river and sending it downstream. He said, subhanAllah, you've been eating it? He said, yes. He said, well, actually, um, you know, the, actually, um, the owner of the house has a big boil on the side of his stomach. Very big boy with pus and something. And the Hakim, Hakim, he came and told us to make some suji, wrap it on the boils, so the suji would suck out the pus, and then we would disposing of it by putting it in the banana bowl. So he went back to the mufti who told him that you should find some job, and he told him, he said, yes. Yeah. He said, the moral of the story is make your own suji. Make your own. You will rely on someone else. He said, Tawakul is not that you don't work but it's that you rely upon Allah Ta'ala and you're satisfied with the outcome once you make the effort. And the Bible Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that Tawakkul is like the bird that goes out in the morning and comes back with a full beak and a full belly. He's fully satisfied and he has food for his children. But it implies that you make an effort, but you realize that the effort you make is with the permission of Allah Ta'ala. That's Tawakkul. Allah Ta'ala is one who allowed you to get the job. A lot of times when he allowed you to, to pursue a specific line of, of education or a specific discipline, this was with a lot of permission, his permission only. And then he allows you to do the interview. He turned the heart of the one interviewing you so that you, you, you were accepted. This is why the Sheikh is saying, don't rely upon your own efforts, your asbab. Don't think that the money, that what you have is because of something you did. It's because of the permission of Allah Ta'ala. So the, the mutawakaneen of those who understand that, yes, of course, there's, there's work. Allah Ta'ala says man can only have what he strives after, but realize that the fact that you can do the work is because Allah Ta'ala has allowed you to do it. This is Torah. And because of thinking this way, Allah Ta'ala honors the believer. So this is what the Shaykh is talking about. So he says that, or just uh, two more paragraphs. He said that, because, uh, he said that, because total trust in Allah Ta'ala will make the heart sound, will strengthen it, and train it, and guide it and let it have marvelous experiences. Said so the person who has to walk with, relying upon a large island, you know, you know, one of the sheikhs said, the believer doesn't say, who, what, when, where, why, and how, you know, how am I gonna do this, and what is it, how can I, he doesn't take himself to a thing because he realizes, and, you know, that a lot of is the one who is in control. This is basic aqeelah, when we say, آمَنْتُ بِاللَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَةِ وَقُدُورِ وَرُسُلِ وَيَوْمَ الْأَرْضِ وَالْقَدْرِ وَخَيْرِ وَالشَّرِ We believe in Allah Ta'ala's qadr, his command, that he has control so that whatever happens to us, whether we like it or dislike it, it's from Allah Ta'ala. So we don't complain. This is a sign of Tawakkah that you don't complain when the decree of Allah Ta'ala descends upon you. So sometimes Allah Ta'ala enlarges our risk or he restricts it. We are Allah Ta'ala service, Allah Ta'ala is not at our beck and call. Sometimes we become impatient when we find ourselves in a situation where our risk has been restricted. Every one of us have we've gone to that stage. Where at some point Allah Ta'ala gives us a lot. And the next thing you know it's restricting it. But when we have a lot, we don't complain. SubhanAllah, mashallah, as soon as Allah Ta'ala says, I'm going to test you by taking some of it away. Uh, what am I going to do now? Stuff about the bills are coming. You know, I, you know, begging myself with my wife, she wants this and that. I don't have to. Well, then, you know, have patience. The first he says, um, Do not rely on your coins of silver and gold and the material wealth, the material means, yes, bad, 
the causes behind how you got it. It's got literally comes from the word meaning the reason behind the thing, the cause of what you're saying. So he said, don't put your trust in your silver, your gold, or, or what you do as a, a profession. Don't put your trust in your job. A lot of times it can take your job. A lot of times it can, it can, can take your risk, your, your money, your wealth. It can all go. Put your trust in a lot of times, a lot of times it will take care of you. So because it can, be, it can become hidden shook that you are more into your job and more into the money and you're not thinking about the one who gave you the job and the money. So he says, um, <clears throat> put your trust in Allah Ta'ala and He will strengthen you, help you, and teach you kindly. Grant you opportunities from sources that you would never imagine. He will fortify your heart. Pay no attention to this world as it comes and goes. It comes and goes. It's doing it. Nor to the movement of creatures to and fro. Don't concern yourself about what's happening to other people or what someone else has that you may not have. And not to the movements of the creatures, and then you will be of the strongest of all the people. If you put your trust in your wealth, you put your trust in your social status, or your family, and your material means, however, you will be exposed to the destitution of a long time, you will, and, and the loss of all those things, because he is very jealous and does not like it, and does not, does not like to see your heart containing anything other than him. A lot of does not appreciate our hearts containing love for anything else other than Him. Unless that love is something that has been sanctioned by a long time. We know that a lot of has sanctioned love of our families, of course. Love of our children, love of each other. This is part of our deen. Our deen is about love. This, is, this whole affair is an affair of love. You know. And, but when it comes to the worldly means, those things, we should not love those things. And one of the diseases that the Ummah is, the ummah is facing today, one of the maladies is Hubbu dunya wa karahatul maw Love of dunya and distaste or dislike of the death We don't want to die, it's almost like the Jews A lot of times this is how they're so greedy for life And we become, in some cases, just like them We're afraid to die because we don't want to leave what we love So don't fall in love with the dunya It is a tool, it is a means to an end Because a lot of times, you know, وَإِلَيْكَ الْمَسِيرِ And to you is our return you know, you know, I, you know, we should have reliance on Allah Ta'ala who is the best of arrangers of affairs. He is the wakil. He is the best of protectors and the best of, of arrangers of our affairs. This is talk. This discourse goes on and on, but I didn't want to do a lot of it. We didn't want to make this too long. We just want to do a few things and then we'll talk. Of course, no Mazarisa is complete in turn unless there is Salat al Nabi or some other issue. And we'll end with the Dulu and Salat al Nabi. Salat al Nabi. Salat al Nabi. يا ربي بالمصطفى بلغ مقاصدنا واغفر لنا ما مضى يا واسع الكرم يا ربي بالمصطفى بلغ مقاصدنا واغفر لنا ما مضى يا واسع الكرم يا ربي بالمصطفى بلغ مقاصدنا واغفر لنا ما مضى يا واسع الكرم مولاي صلي وسلم دائما 
ابدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم يا ربي صل وسلم دائما ابدا على حبيبي واهل بيت كلهم ولم تسن من أحيا الظلام إلى أن اشتكت قدماه ضر من ورمي وشد من سغب أعشاءه وطوى تحت الحجارة كزهم طرف الأدام وراودته الجبال شم من ذهب عن نمسه فأراها أيما شممي مولاي صل وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم يا ربي صل وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبي وأهل بيت كلهم وأكدت زهده فيها ضرورته إن الضرورة لا تعد على العصام وكيف تدعو إلى الدنيا ضرورة من لولاه لم تخرج الدنيا من العدم محمد آه محمد آه محمد سيد الكونين والثقلين والفريقين من عرب ومن عجم محمد 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 اللهم سل وسلم عليه وآله محمد أشرف الإعراب والعجم محمد خير من يمشي على قدم محمد باسق المعروف جامعه محمد صاحب الإحسان والكرم محمد 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 تاج رسل الله قاطبة محمد صادق الأقوال والكلام محمد ثابت الميثاق حافظه محمد طيب الأخلاق والشيام محمد 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 صلى الله عليه وآله محمد هو يدبي النور طينته محمد لم يزل نورا من القدم محمد حاكم بالعدل ذو شرف محمد معدن الإنعام والحكام محمد 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 صلى الله عليه وآله محمد خير خلق الله من مضاد محمد خير رسل الله كلهم محمد دينه حق نبيل به محمد مجرم مجملا حقا على علم محمد 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 
اللهم صل وسلم عليه وعلى آله محمد ذكره راح لأنفسنا محمد سكروح فرض على الأمم محمد يوم بعث الناس شافعنا محمد نوره الهادي من الظلم محمد قائم لله ذو همام محمد خاتم للرسل كله نبينا الأمير الله فلا أحد أبر في قولنا منه ولا نعم هو الحبيب الذي ترجى شفاعته لكل هول من الأحوال مقاتعين دع إلا الله فالمستمسكون به مستمسكون بحضر غير مفصم يا ربي بالمصطفى بلغ مقاسدنا وفي لنا ما مرضى يا واسع الكرام يا ربي بالمصطفى بلغ مقاسدنا وانفي لنا ما مضى يا واسع الكرم فمبلغ العلم فيه أنه بشر وأنه خير خلق الله كلهم ومن تكن برسول الله نصرته إن تلكه الأسد في أجاميها تجيم ثم الرضا عن أبي بكر وعن عمر وعن علي وعن أثمان ذي الكرم فاغفر لي ناشدها واغفر لي قاريها سألت الخير يا يا ذا الجول والكرم يا ربي بال مصطفى بلغ مقاصدنا يا ربي بالمصطفى بلغ مقاصدنا يا ربي بالمصطفى بلغ مقاصدنا وانفي لنا ما مضى يا واسع الكرم اللهم صل وسلم عليه وعلى اله سبحان الله والحمد لله لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم اللهم صل على سيدنا وشفيعنا وغلانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم واغفر لنا وارحمنا إنك أنت الكفور الرحيم يا الله يا رحمة يا رحيم يا ما يقوم في الحال يا رحمة 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 on the Prophet of Habib, Sayyidina Abu Ula Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Ya Allah, we ask you to send us a wabu of our recitation, our Duru Sharif, Ya Allah on all the marhum, those who pass away, Ya Rabbi Al-Ameen Ya Allah, we ask you to give us a wabu of this recitation on them, Ya Rabbi Al-Ameen Ya Allah, we know that even though we ask that you send them a wabu of this recitation, Ya Allah, we still have this wabu of Ya Rabbi Al-Ameen Ya Allah, this is an easy good deed for us, Ya Rabbi Al-Ameen Ya Allah, make us of the mutawakkirin, those who rely upon you, Ya Rabbi Al-Ameen, those who understand that all the means come from Ya Rabbi Al-Ameen. Let us be of those who understand that whether it is good or bad, that it comes from Ya Rabbi Al-Ameen, that whether you restrict our risk or enlarge it, Ya Allah, that you are the one that has the control, and no one else has the control. And we say, wa la hawla wa la khuwati illa bi al-ayin. صلى الله تعالى على خير خاتم سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا برحمته يا رب العالمين.